I don't even know with all this evidence and proof that a judge would even consider it. Well, so I guess tell me this. What's your biggest concern here? Is, is being on the hook for money or your voucher? Uh, the voucher. Okay, I agree. I, I just wanted to make sure. So I think explaining to... I wonder if your doctor, I, I understand what you're telling me, that she can't say for sure that that's what's happening here because there isn't enough information. But my hope would be is that and the information you do, like, would she be able to put in writing her, at least her suspicions, and perhaps that would be enough to keep Section 8 at bay of, you know, that this is a legitimate thing. I mean, I, I wonder if she would even be comfortable to say that these are my suspicions and because my suspicions are strong enough that it's the mold, my advice was to move out. You know, my advice to Stefan was that he, he not live in this unit. Do you think she would go that far or not? And I understand if not, but I'm I, I just think trying to kind she, of I, find ways to... I think she would because she told me that she was glad that I moved out of that place because she, she told me that continued uh, exposure would could cause l permanent lung damage or even death. Okay. 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 All right. That she said that. Yeah. Okay. So to me, that says she is going to be supportive of this. That means that when you go to Section Eight and say this is what I have to do, that they're going to let you do it. If they try to mess with you, that you have a very strong position that you had no choice but to terminate this lease and move and that you're entitled to take your voucher with you. Okay. Okay. I mean that's so I think I think it should be I think it should be two things then. I think it should be obviously getting in touch with her and asking her to put what she's comfortable with in writing. It doesn't have to be terribly detailed. But it can be like what we just said, that you know, I suspect that his health problems are attributable to the mold. Um you know, and I advise that he, you know, and which she can relate that to the apartment to the extent she's comfortable, the better, you know, and get a, a letter from her. It can be three sentences, truthfully. It doesn't have to be your whole medical history. In fact, I don't really want it to be. I want it to just say, here's kind of what she's thinking. Um, and she doesn't have to be sure either. Because, and and she could, I guess she could include in the letter, you know, I've advised him that he needs additional testing and he has that scheduled for the coming months. Right. I'm just worried, though, that, you know, um, after three months' time, my health will be different by then. It might, but what's the, what's the alternative, though? You know what I mean? Yeah, I was just hoping I could get so in right away. There and, like... <laughs> Well, I unfortunately have no control over that. Right. But, you know, the alternative is that you stay there and, you know, risk being really, really sick. So, um, I think the, I think the, I think the best thing you can do, Stefan, is to document, create documentation, and then keep them informed. Um, and, you know, perhaps, do you ever email with your worker, or is it all done in person or by phone? With who? With uh, the worker, the Section 8 worker? Yeah. It's It's been all uh, pretty much over the phone. Do you have her email? Uh, I could get it. I guess I just ask because I think that that helps, again, with documentation. You know, where you say that you kind of lay things out that you have, um, as she knows, developed these health issues, that your doctor has strong suspicions are linked to mold in your apartment, that you had to terminate your lease because it was a health and safety risk, and, you know, um, and that you need to use your voucher somewhere else, how, what's the process to do that? And then, of course, looking for a place. Yeah. But I'm, from what she said in the past, though, it's, I have to finish out this lease first before I can move anywhere else. They can't make you finish out a lease or lose your voucher when you have 
legally terminated your lease for a health or safety reason, period. They can't, they can't force that. That's, I mean, you know what I mean? Right. You may say that, and if you have, if they, if they push back on that, I want you to let me know. Okay. I just think that they think that um, either there is no health problems from this or that my health problems are not related to the apartment. They think it's something else, a previous thing. The landlord, the property manager, she was like, well, you were sick before this and you've had health problems in the past and something else is causing it. It's not this apartment. Well, but they're not doctors, and that's why having something from your doctor, even if it is not 100% saying this mold in this apartment is, has done this, has caused this health problem, but even, you know, based on my, you know, medical training and experience, I have strong reason to believe blah, you know? Right. Um, they don't get to decide over a doctor. Like, that's just all there is to it. You know, a property manager and a Section 8 worker don't get to say, um, you know, I don't believe the doctor. That just isn't how, the, how it works. Um, and if that happens, I want, you know, I want to, I'd want to know. I think, but I think, you know, you get your ducks in a row with, with the doctor to the extent you can, that she's willing to give you something and then, um, you know, provide that to them. They should not say no to that request and if they do I like I said I want to know about it okay um so I mean and, and the other part of this is that it's like as we kind of talked about at the end of our conversation last time it's like you can get in trouble for not living in the unit anyway you know um where your voucher is paying your rent. It's, it's like, if you can't, you know, they're going to, I don't know. Let's, let's start here, because if they try and push back on this, then I, I think you have a strong position, especially if the doctor would provide something in writing. Okay. So, calls to doctors where I start, once you maybe have a little bit more information on that and like what she's going to do then an email to section 8 so you have it documented and then looking for a place to move so you have you know you're starting that process of using it somewhere else okay does that sound like a plan that sounds like a good plan okay will you keep me posted with what you find out yes definitely okay do you have any questions any other questions at this point uh, no, I don't, I, it's just going to be a long process, <laughs> but yeah, if I can get the I doctor, know, I know. if I can get the doctor to put that in writing, then yeah, that is a good start at least, I think. Based on what you just said that she said to you, I think that it seems like she should be willing, be willing at least, even, especially if you kind of say, look, you don't have to say for sure, because no one knows for sure. But even if she just put in writing what she said to you that you just told me, that's very strong. Okay. Yeah, she just said that the the other doctors, the pulmonologist, the allergist, would be, uh, what's the word? They, they, they're they the uh, experts, I guess, in, in that, the specialty. It's their specialty. She says right. that wasn't, you know, her specialty with trying to find that stuff out. Right, and I think... Um, that's totally fair. You know, it would be like, you don't want me giving you legal advice on an area of the law that I have no experience in or, you know, or I'm not familiar with, right? You go right. to someone who specializes in that. And, and um, so, it, and it, it should, the letter should indicate that you have followed her advice on those and you have, have scheduled those referrals. Um, so... It's okay for her to even say, you know, here are my suspicions. Here was my advice to Stefan. Um, I've also referred him for this additional follow-up that will provide more definitive answers, which he has scheduled, but those aren't for some time. I think that if, if, if a letter just says that, that's very strong. Okay. So see what she would be willing to do. Um, you, know, I'll, you know, not making it clear to, or making it clear to her that it's, it's not the holy grail she has to write out for 
right. what she knows now, which is limited. Um, and if you want me to, yeah, so I guess just let me know. And, and you know, what you hear from her, what you hear from Section 8. Okay. All right. Okay. But, um, All right, well, keep me posted, okay? Okay, one more thing. Um, when I did talk, when I was talking to the property manager and Section 8, she said after the inspection, she couldn't find nothing. She said that she would send me a letter with what uh, she thinks, I guess, is, is the next step, I guess. Um, that your housing worker said that? Yeah, Section 8, yes. She'd send a letter okay. with the, what well, she came up with. You reason. know, if you... Right, and you're still getting... You're still at least going and checking your mail, right? Um, no, because they, uh, I, f I forgot to tell you this part. They, uh, tampered with my mailbox. I know it was them, but, you know, they, there's no proof of who, who did it or what, how it happened. But for some reason, sure. uh, a couple weeks ago, my mailbox, the lock won't lock anymore. And so okay. I talked to the mail lady and she said that, uh, they can't put mail in there because it's, uh, not secure. And I said, well, where's the mail going then? And she says, I've been bringing it to the office every day. I said, oh, really? Hmm. So then when I went to them and asked them about that, they said, no, the mail lady has never come here. We don't accept that. We don't do that, blah, blah, blah. And then they, then they blame me for not telling them about the mailbox. Well, I just found out about it. And I thought, I didn't know who was supposed to fix it. I thought maybe the post office would fix it. But apparently not in this situation. So apparently my mail got lost for like over a week and who knows where that mail went and then I had to put a hold on it so it's sitting at the post office right now and I'm probably going to have to change okay. it back to my sister's house. But yeah. Okay, like, so that was going to be, so I want you to obviously have a place where you can get secure mail, whether it's a PO box that you pay for for a little bit if you can or your sister's house or something. And then I want, in your email to Section 8, you advise them of an updated mailing address. Um, I would say the safest thing is a P.O. box, if you can afford that for right now. It can only, you know, if only for a month or two while you're getting to your new place. And the reason I say that is because, obviously, so if Section 8 tries to terminate your voucher, they have to send you a letter in the mail, and you have a chance to appeal it. If you don't get it, the chance to appeal it is very short and like 10 or 15 days. And so that's with, you know, that includes the time it takes to mail it. So um, we see people who, when there's problems like this, miss that appeal deadline. Um, the problem with giving your sister is, is that I don't want to give them any more ammunition for trying to terminate you because of, you know, that you're not living there, then we can. And I'm not saying I would use that because it falls under the same reasoning as everything else we've talked about. But it's also nice if you can just be like, I just have a P.O. box, please just send it there. Or, you know, update this as my, as my mailing address and send any notices there and include that in your email to them so you have documentation that you had notified them of that. Um, and I would say probably the same is true with your landlord. Okay. Um, that's, yeah, as I say, the safest thing, if, if it's possible. So, um, what other questions do you have? Uh, I think that's it. Okay. Um, well, keep you posted with any updates that you find out, um, any papers you get, obviously, and, um, you know, what the doctor says, and we'll go from there, okay? Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Uh-huh, bye-bye. Bye. 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 So that was the, missed the first, um, like, 10 minutes of that conversation. It's September, or September, it's October 1st, 2018, 3.03 p.m. now, and I couldn't get my camera to work for the first part of the conversation, but hopefully you heard enough of it, what I have to do. <sighs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. God bless.